Hey everyone, decided to come out and walk around again and talk and uh, got some neighbor just a few houses down from me that's been working on this worthless piece of shit truck for like the past two or so years. God, I wish you would give up on that worthless pile of crap, but whatever. All right, <clears throat> so, um, might have noticed a major slowdown of uh, videos and stuff. Mostly that's because I've, I'm running short on, on stuff, personally, you know, I mean, I've, I've still got stuff to talk about, but uh, the well's running a little dry. And speaking of running dry, Steve tries. You know, there's only so many weird sodas in, you know, this area until that you can get and try before you start running out of new stuff to try. Well, um, um, we're running low, but, uh, there's still a few things. So, um, it's not over, but, uh, they will be spaced out a lot. Anyways. So, um, okay, here's a topic that I've been holding on to for a while. Um, I don't know if you remember, but, you know, in, um, when you're in grade school, they had, you know, you have your, you know, your fire drills and stuff, you know. Uh, I guess, you know, I, I never went to a school that was all inside, where it was just one big building. That kind of crap only exists in TV shows and movies as far as I'm concerned. I've never seen a completely inside school. It's always been outside. You know, you just have a big, huge area. And then, you know, there's rooms. But, you know, there's no one massive school building. So I'm guessing uh, fire drills are way, way more important in those ones than in, like the schools that I went to. Because honestly, you just, you go out the door and bam, you're outside. That's it. But since I live in California, we didn't just have uh, fire drills. We also had earthquake drills. Because, you know, there's earthquakes. And they used to call them, you know, they probably still called them duck and cover duck and cover all right so when i went and started school i was in kindergarten obviously duh. but i was in one of those combined classes where there weren't enough kids for an entire class so they combined two of them together so i was in a kindergarten slash first grade class. Um, might seem odd to some people, might not seem odd to others, but I was in one of those combined classes. So a lot of the stuff that I did in kindergarten, I had to redo in first grade because I was in first grade now. I wasn't have supposed to have done that stuff before, but I did. In any case, we had duck and cover. Duck and cover is basically when basically you just uh, get underneath your desk and put your hands over your neck like that and uh, then you just wait, I guess, for the earthquake to end before you come out. That's what duck and cover was. Well, this is going to sound really stupid, <laughs> but the first time that they started talking about duck and cover in school. I mean, obviously, I had never heard of duck and cover before. They're, coming, they're talking about duck and cover, blah, blah, blah. All I heard was the word duck. That's what I heard. That, that, that's it. Just the word duck. As soon as they said the word duck, I'm like, ducks. Ducks. I want to see the ducks. When are they going to bring the ducks in? <laughs> and I was really disappointed that at the end of this big, long speech, you know, I was like, okay, when are they going to bring the ducks in? You know, I'm, I'm expecting, you know, someone to, you know, some animal handle controller, some, like, park ranger or whatever to come in carrying a cage 
they're gonna open up the cage and let the duck out and we're all gonna pet the duck. It'll be like a little mini petting zoo. They never brought the duck in. There was no duck. I was extremely disappointed that there was no duck in duck and cover. It took me a while to figure out what duck and cover meant. I had to sit through a, an actual duck and cover drill to actually understand what they were talking about. Because the second time they showed up, I'm like, okay, maybe they'll bring the duck this time. <laughs> nope. That was it. All right. So we have fire drills where basically, you know, like there's this, there's this tone. I, I guess it was like a long tone, unbroken through the PA system. And then, you know, we all know that, oh, we got to stand up and walk outside to the designated area on the blacktop. It's not like the inside school where you got to go through the entire school to get out, like in the, the movie uh, Kindergarten Cop, where you see kids just come screaming out the front door. No, just stand up, walk outside the classroom door, bam, you're outside, you're safe, you're good. <sighs> but that wasn't all we had. Oh, no. Because not only did we have fire drills, like every school does, and we had duck and cover drills because we're in California, and California is a big earthquake area. We also had flood drills. Bloods. Okay. So, there's this lake, like, way out there, called Lake Kachuma. Kachuma Lake. It's an Indian word. Anyways, um, Kachuma Lake is pretty deep, you know, for a lake of its size. And, uh, you know, there's a dam holding the water back. Well, Inspector came and checked it out. And, you know, there were cracks in this wall. This wall was no longer really structurally sound. So there was, you know, a time for a few years. I think I was like in middle school or something. Yeah, probably middle school. Where, like, the wall, the dam that was holding Kachuma Lake in at any time could have broken. And sent a wall of water 15 feet high towards our town, all right? Um, along the edge of town is this big, empty, dry riverbed. There's nothing down there but homeless people and occasionally a bit of water when it rains. But other than that, it's just a dry riverbed. And so, uh, Kachuma Lake would mostly be funneled through there, but there'd also be water coming over everything else. And they said it would be a wave 15 feet high. And they said Kachuma Lake was far enough away that when or if the dam broke, um, this town would have, I think it was like 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes to grab what they could and get to higher ground, which meant Snob Hill. We call it Snob Hill because that's where all the rich people live, up on the hill. So, you know, they installed these, you know, speakers all over town with an alarm system. And they tested it out once a month. If I remember correctly, it was the last Friday of every month. They tested it out at noon, just to make sure it worked. After a few years, you know, I guess you know, they had reinforced the dam. It wasn't going to break. And they stopped testing the PA system after a while. But uh, it was kind of weird for those few years, especially when it first came out, because you know there's another thing to worry about. A big ass wall of water 15 feet high was gonna come towards this town and swell everything up. Now, of course, back then I'm thinking, eh, it's just water. I don't really see it being 15 feet high. I really don't think, you know. It could cause that much destruction. Well, lo and behold for me to find out that where I live is one of the lowest points in town. So if that water is going anywhere, it's going to my house. 
you know, there's something going down in your neighborhood underwater. And then, of course, you know, there was that big ass earthquake tsunami thing that in Japan a few years back. And yeah, then you got to see exactly how much destruction a big ass wall of water can cause. That was a lot of destruction. So, thankfully, the Kachuma Lake Dam didn't break. We didn't go underwater. Of course, there are more alarms and drills and stuff. Uh, they had bomb drills and everything. I think um, you know, our, our town has well, it had two middle school campuses. The current middle school campus is the old high school. They built the new high school. High school was held there. Middle school got moved to the old high school. There was also a second middle school, which was closed down for a while, but after a while they decided to start it back up. And so I went there. And it was sixth grade only. Um, it's where they stuck you know, overflow kids because they just didn't have enough room at the main campus. So I got sent to the secondary campus along with a bunch of other people. And it was just supposed to be a temporary stopgap, only sixth grade. Okay, that's fine. I don't have any seventh or eighth graders lording it over me. Well, next year, there was still overcrowding problems at the main campus. So they said, okay, what we're gonna do we're going to take the secondary campus and we're going to open it up for 6th and 7th graders. Alright. And then, once again, they stuck me there. You know, I'm not on the bottom. And I'm, well, at least at that campus, we were on the top because we were 7th graders. And that was as high as you can go there. The next year, they didn't open up the uh, secondary campus for 8th graders. So, I had to go to the main campus. Which is okay for me. I mean, I didn't like having to learn a new campus, but, you know, whatever. At least I wasn't going to a new campus and being a sixth grader. But, <clears throat> that's a little besides the point. I told that because, leading up to that, apparently, when I was in seventh grade, the year before I went to the main campus, apparently there was a bomb threat or a bomb scare. Apparently someone walked into one of the uh, bathrooms on school and they found a soda can sitting on the floor with a bunch of wires and shit coming out of it. So, of course, they freak out and they, you know, go run to the office and, you know, campus gets evacuated and, and you know, nothing ever came of it. So it was most likely just a soda can with wires sticking out of it that someone, you know, someone set up there for the fucking lulls. So um, that happened the year before I got there. But, um, of course, because of that, then we started to have bomb drills. Where, you know, you gotta find out, you know, what to do if there's a bomb. And, you know, that, that's, that's another drill. Before I let it slip my mind, when I was in fourth grade, there was this girl in fourth grade. And... She came into class one day as like a brand new student, and then probably a few months down the road, she just <sighs> disappeared. And the cops came to check the room out because apparently she was the daughter of some guys that were dealing drugs, um, apparently pretty seriously in this town. And, uh,. Uh, there had been, you know, people had said that, you know, they'd seen this this girl, fourth grade girl, walk around town with shit tons of cash. There's only one reason a fourth grader would be walking around with shit tons of cash, and that's if they're a mule. So, she was moving cash for her family. Um, I hated that girl. I hated her because she was just a fucking bitch. So... When the cops came to check the room out, you know, <laughs> I had like I had a piece of chalk, and I scraped that chalk against the inside of her desk 
to make it look like, you know, there's white powder sitting there. <laughs> oh <my God>. Okay. <laughs> so I scraped the inside of her desk with this chalk so there was white powder in there. <laughs> because I wanted her gone. I knew it was chalk dust. The cops would be able to figure out pretty quick that it was chalk dust, but it would just make it so that she would have to leave that much faster. But you know, we never saw her again. We never heard anything of her again. So obviously what happened is uh, either they arrested the parents and the kid got sent off to somewhere or what most likely happened is the parents got wind cops were onto them and uh, packed up shit real quick and got the fuck out of town so there was that okay one last thing one last drill oh here we go all right so when I was in high school guess what happened here's this little date on the calendar ah 9-11 September 11th, year 2001. So, <sighs> brother, <sighs> of course, that prompted more drills. Now, I live in California, not New York. But, you know, the whole nation is on alert. I remember when it happened, I mean, you couldn't turn on a TV and see the pictures. I'm assuming that's what it was like for, you know, the, uh, the JFK assassination or the, uh, the Challenger disaster where you couldn't turn on a TV and not see this. That's what it was like. I mean, you turn on a TV and it's there. Plane crashes into the building, big fireball, then it shows the building collapse. So, you know, we had drills for that kind of stuff too. But, uh, Here's where it hits kind of close to home for me. You know, like I said, you know, I live in California, which is nowhere near close to New York. But during that period of time, my parents went on vacation to Buffalo, New York for, whoa, for, uh, I guess a cousin was getting married. That's why they went there. So... They went to Buffalo, New York, and uh, they had left like a, an itinerary, a schedule of, you know, kind of where they were going to be for each day. So, you know, myself and my sister would know, you know, whereabouts they might be on any given day. Well, um, I wake up. Terrorist attacks have happened. I go and I check the itinerary. It says right there on the piece of paper, black and white, that on September 11th, they were going to be in New York City. New York, New York. Holy motherfucking shit. You do not know how freaked out I was the entire day. So I'm like, holy shit, my parents could be dead. I could be an orphan. You know, me and my sister, you know, we got like no one. My parents could be dead. I don't fucking know what to do. So, you know, I, I, I honestly, I didn't know what to do. I went to school, just like always. And there was a drastically low student count that day. And uh, throughout the day, it just got lower and lower and lower as parents, you know, I guess Ted taking the day off of work, taking a half day or whatever, or, you know, pulled their kids out of school so, you know, they could be home, you know, together with family, that, you know, the safe thing. I had no family there, just me and, me and my sister. I was freaking the hell out. My parents had not called. Like, I'm sitting there waiting for them to call. Because 
Um, I tried to call them where it said, you know, with the phone number, I guess they were staying with a relative. I tried calling that phone number, couldn't get through. I didn't know at that time that you had to dial a different number to call out of state. So I just kept calling the same damn business and I kept getting the same damn answering machine. I was freaking the hell out. Did not know what to do. Well, probably about seven or eight o'clock at night, the phone rings. I'm like, holy crap, whoa. It was my parents, they're okay. Wanted to check in with us. Story was, they were on the road going to New York. You know, they're on the freeway, trying to head into the city, when obviously terrorist attacks happened and everything just shut down, stand still. So traffic wasn't moving at all. You know, my parents, you know, they, they're not people that listen to the radio in the car or anything. So they're just sitting there in silence, not knowing what's going on. Finally, like, you know, a police officer or a CHP guy or or high, highway patrol for New York, you know, he's walking down the road and my dad rolls down the window, hey officer, uh, well, what's going on? And he tells him what happened. So they roll up the window, turn on the radio. Finally, I guess after hours, traffic starts moving again and it's getting them out of the city. So they turn around, drive back to, I guess, my aunt's house or whatever, and then they're able to call me. Because, you know, they don't have cell phones. Anyways, that's uh, all the drills I can remember from school. Shut the fuck up, you goddamn redneck. All right. It's about time that I uh, call us quits. So, um, look forward to future videos. I'm, I'm fucking signing out.